Klimber is a 50 plus level puzzle and one of three cage puzzles co-designed by Christoph Lowe and Andrew Kroll. The others are Cyber and Chamber, which you can see here. Ken Irvine also assisted in the design of the Klimber puzzle. This is really nice movements, requires a few rotations to solve. Because there are presently no copies of Klimber available, I designed my own version, actually several versions of the same puzzle. I'm not 100% sure it's accurate. I think it is. A viewer with a real version can let me know in the comments, but if you look at the cage, I think this is how the cage is constructed. This one has a magnetic top. The only internal piece I see is right here, this little cube on the in, inside. And everything else is visible from the outside. Assuming this is accurate, I'll provide some hints in an assembly and disassembly solution. I've got three versions that I made. Two have removable tops. You'll see this one. And this one has a removable top, and I have one that I had glued together. Anyone can build their own burr puzzle if you have a 3D printer and you're willing to learn the basics of some type of CAD program. Many burr puzzles are built using a plugin for OpenSCAD or OpenSCAD called PuzzleCAD. And I've used that on numerous equation, uh, occasions for simpler puzzles. For this one, I used Fusion 360 because there were some odd angled cuts in the pieces and the frame. I found it easier to also add some parts for the removable top. If anyone's interested in uh, viewing a tutorial on using Fusion 360 to build these types of puzzles, let me know in the comments and uh, I probably could put something together. Now the beauty of these puzzles is in discovering their movements, but sometimes you get stuck and need a hint here and there, so I'll provide some hints and maybe that'll be enough to get you going. But if you really get stuck, there is a complete assembly and a disassembly uh, section at the end. So let's look at hint number one. And hint number one is what about rotations? Rotations are a little vague. Now, if you have the puzzle fully assembled, you can take out the first piece with one rotation. And by rotation, it could be this way, could be this way, but in this case, the rotation is taking the end of a piece and simply rotating it once or twice. So, it could be this piece, this piece, or this piece, but one single rotation is all that's required to take out the first piece. Every other motion is linear, meaning uh, you're just moving the piece X and Y or in a Z up and down direction. Hint number two is in determining what piece goes in last if you're assembling or which piece comes out first. And I worked several days on this and had the uh, wrong piece. And sometimes if you're building this, it can be hard to get started because you don't know what pieces should go in first. But the magic piece that comes out first, and I worked thinking it was this one, but it's not. It's actually this one. So this one is the one that goes in last if you're assembling, comes out first if you're disassembling. Now, as I mentioned, I built a few versions of this. One was a small 70% version, and I put magnets in here to make the top come off. Now, this is, makes it uh, diff a little difficult to assemble because it's not strong enough. So instead of magnets, I recommend if you build uh, a normal cube, and this has 15 millimeter voxels or cubes, um, these screws make it much more solid uh, when you're going to solve it because any force can remove the magnets. But this can be useful for testing parts, just to see how parts go in and out. 
or if you want to test a certain short solution that you think you have for a piece of parts you'll quickly find that you need to go this part needs to come in through here and connects there and you can learn about all the individual pieces okay let's do a disassembly and we start by pushing the square in moving this piece over and having it go up here and you'll notice there's a little notch to allow that to move up far enough and at this point you'll push this through the blue piece comes back up against the red piece and then this will fall down to the bottom and from here the puzzle sort of can fall apart on you a little bit and so if we look at this from this view we've got a green piece down there and I'll bring the green piece back and out so this is the position sort of the first position of the puzzle that's stable now what we're going to do is put part of the red piece under the blue piece by moving this down and over and you move the blue piece up a bit and this will just slide under now the red piece is the piece that actually rotates so we're going to move the blue piece out of the way and in order to rotate this red piece you have to have a free uh, slot at the right hand side so we've got to get that blue piece out of the way and we're going to move the green piece down we can sort of see that in here and the blue piece over top of it and what that does is it frees up that section there and so I'm going to bring this up and over and the tip of this goes in there and it just allows you to rotate that up and you can sort of lock that in there you don't need that now to remove the first piece now what we're going to do is take this back to where it was actually we're going to move it up and forward and the green piece will slide back and we're going to put this right there now we need to move this blue piece over to the left side so we need to get the green piece up in the air well if I move it forward it will actually go up into a little slot right there like that and you can see that the blue piece now can go down and over this piece now the green piece will uh, if we have it correctly the green piece will now slide down and you can move that forward and push it forward even more the blue piece comes with it and at this peak time you have this on the inside which you can move upwards towards you so I'll move this up I can bring this over slide the blue piece back this will go down and that will come right out through there now the rest is fairly trivial and I'll leave that to your own devices when we're assembling we're going to put the blue piece here in first it goes in through this little window I'm going to orient the cube this way and that's going to go in this way and this is a, a rotation which is required for this one and what you're going to find is that you can take this end and you can twist that inside down and push it through so that's how that goes in and what we're going to do is we're just going to push this all the way down so it falls inside the second piece is the slanted piece and we're going to put this in uh, this way 
in through here. And you'll find there's a slot there that allows you to rotate that. And we can bring that up and just slide it into its final position. There. Now, one of the things we have to do with this piece is get it out of the way in order to insert this piece. So we're going to bring this inside. With the blue piece to the left, we're going to rotate this through this slot and push it forward. So that's almost going to be, it's going to be there for a while, and we have a blue piece down here. Now, that blue piece, you can... If you get in here, you can rotate that so this is to the left, this bottom piece here. So that will rotate in there fairly easily. We're going to get that on the right hand or the left hand side. And we're going to start to put this piece in through here. So we get this in so far. Now we're going to bring that up. And what it's going to do is it's going to slide over top of the blue piece under the yellow piece here. If we bring the blue piece forward, we'll find that blue piece will slip in to the middle of the red piece. And I can just push that back. So we've got that piece now locked inside. Now, to continue, I need this to hit the back wall so I'm going to now bring this up or in we're going to lift this up again and bring it over top of the blue piece and we're going to bring this forward and I believe I should be able to bring this Ah, uh, and sometimes I get confused. Sorry, this piece is going to go over here and out of the way. It's one way where it goes all the way forward. And we're just going to drag this back here. So we've got this type of position. We've got a, we've got a red piece all the way back and our blue piece here. So now, if we look in from the top, we're going to move this piece up, sorry, the blue piece up and over top of the red. We're going to move the red down. And what you'll find is that we're going to lock that blue piece into the middle so that there's a, a slot on the right-hand side. I can get this to... Stay. It's going to go up and over. So here's what we have there. This is what it looks like here. And what we can see is we have this empty spot on the right hand side. And I can now bring this out and rotate this and put this all the way down. And it will go into the base right there. I can now bring the blue piece over. And I can put this back, this red piece, sorry, the blue piece will come up. So at this point, we're going to pull this red piece back a bit. And what you'll find here is that this blue piece will come up. We'll bring the yellow piece up, over, and into its final position there. But we'll push it all the way through. We'll bring the blue piece down a little bit. So the blue piece is now down. Push it through and bring that up and out of the way. Now this red piece in through here can come 
over and if I it can come forward and if I lift the blue piece up it'll come over to the right and you can push that forward like that and so now you have this blue piece here if you drop this down a bit and then move this down and over and finally you're going to push the blue piece up and you have your cube salt there you have it